I'm the mother of three daughters in each level of the Wentzville School District. They are actually here with me today, two of my children. The third one had wrestling practice, so she stayed home. They again don't have school today. So I said, please come with me for our own civics lesson. So thank you for having us. I am not an educator, an administrator, a politician. To be honest, I'm shaking right now and scared to death to even do this. But I am a mom who has watched my kids and my community suffer in a district that's failing them. I'm here to support all efforts that give parents options, including SB 23 and 25. Wentzville School District has the highest tax rate in St. Charles County, yet we are the only district in that county that hasn't had consistent face-to-face -face instruction or reliable virtual learning since March of 2020. That is nearly one year. My straight A student has so much anxiety from the constant changes and inconsistencies that she often cannot sleep. My middle school age daughter, who already struggled in school, has lost all enthusiasm for learning, and it seems each day that there are some tears. I am tired of wiping tears from my baby's faces as they struggle to, to learn in this environment. It's not working for my family. We have to have more options. There have been numerous days where my children have had approximately 20 minutes total of virtual instruction where the school's network goes down and whole classes and days are just considered a wash. You need to know that our district has such a bus driver shortage, they are canceling bus routes the night before school for many families. Just abandoning and leaving children unable to even get to school. Some children have waited outside in the cold for 30 minutes for their late or their lost bus. This is happening right now in the Wentzville School District, right now. This is really unacceptable. To be clear, Wentzville School District's failures are not strictly COVID related. Every other district in my county has made face-to-face -face instruction work, and they are not leaving kids stranded with no way to get to school. We feel trapped and helpless in our community in a district that is not putting the needs of our children first, and families have to have other options. They have to have choice. I refuse. My community refuses to put an asterisk by this day, by this year, and call it a day. I'm here to advocate for educational choice and opportunities that we are not getting in the Wentzville School District. And for other children in the state of Missouri as well, these options can bring change and relief for all of our children. We cannot go another year in a broken school system. We cannot. Our children, we have to put our kids' needs first. We have to. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions, comments, Senator? Thank you, Madam Chair. More of just a, a comment. Uh, you know, my heart breaks for you, uh, for what you're going through, and that's, that's across the state. Um, I, my family person know that I have five kids in our own public school. We had to pull two out just due to the, the circumstances. Um, and seeing this all across the state, I've been to hearing with uh, the, the chairwoman, um, and just hearing the frustration, just like yours, with school districts, that, that have ample funds, they're having in-person sports, they're having in-person daycare, they refuse to open to, to educate their kids. And then when parents voice their concern, they're, they're looked down at, and we even had a school board member adopt somebody, and the parent who was struggling and was frustrated was terminated from her position because of the school board It's out of control instances all across the state. And, and it's, it's you know, beholden upon us as a body to, to see this need and, and to help those who, who can't afford it. Yeah, those, those who can, that's great, but those who can, and especially in struggling communities, this is, this is going to put them behind forever. To, to think that, like you said, an asterisk by this year, that's not how education works. And, and I just wanted to read, I, I received this from a, a former state rep, I uh, uh, served with of uh, the force in school district is reducing their grades, their grade level. So an 80% to 100% is considered an A, a 60% to a 79.9% is a B, a 40% to a 59% is now considered a C. That is not helping our children in any way, shape, or form by moving the goalposts just to get them by this year or whenever. This is a, a pandemic idea that we're all dealing with, but we have got to do something, and, and I just uh, 
my heart breaks for you and, and everybody that's going to come up here and do this. So thank you for your testimony. Do you think if there was a, if there was a measure to refund property taxes for all the districts where the schools don't open, would that make a difference? I think it would make a difference. I moved, you know, specifically to Wentzville, knowing I was going to pay higher taxes than any other district in my county, and I, I feel like it was a big switch. Honestly, it's it's so sometimes when you when you bring up the fact that. You know, the taxpayer is paying for the education, they're not getting the education. Sometimes you run up against people who look at you like, how, how can you even mention that? And I'm like, no, how can you not mention it? Right. It's These really people are working and it's hard earned money and they're paying for this education. And, and uh, the federal government through the state is providing additional millions of additional dollars. So. And I just would like to point out that the Winsville School District received CARES money in the amount of $250,000 for transportation. They're currently using it for cleaning supplies. They have such a bus driver shortage that it could be applied to, but they're using it to clean buses and clean their buildings. If you can't even get kids to school, what is, what is the use of that? It's completely a waste of, of, of money. Are you able to go to your school board and have any kind of discussion with them? They like to hear one opinion and one opinion only. And in fact, at the last school board meeting I attended, when somebody tried to have a separate opinion, she was shut down. So that's one of the other things that we kind of noticed. Um, some of the school boards, not all, of this, it, all of these situations don't apply to everyone. There's, there's a lot of schools, and especially in rural areas, I think we're working hard to stay open, but, you know, in, in some of our bigger towns and districts, um, parents try to go in and talk to the school board, but like in Columbia, that meets in a little bitty room where, you know, to keep socially distanced, you can hardly allow anyone in. I mean, and you have to wait till the end of the meeting, which is commonly four hours long. I mean, I don't consider that really trying to hear from, you know, your constituents. So. Uh, the part about recalling school board members that's in the bill seems like it might be something that people would avail themselves of. And what do you do when your school board is heavily influenced by the teachers you can? What, what do you do in those instances when it's not about what's the best interest of the children, it's about what's in the best interest of the teachers? And I'm not saying that all teachers are that way. There are a lot of really good teachers in my school district, but there are also teachers that don't want to work. Exactly. I really appreciate your coming. I'm sorry that you're, I don't know how many times I've told parents I'm sorry, which, you know, doesn't, it doesn't mean a lot, but I really am. I think it's a, it's a bad situation, and we're here to try to do something about it. Thank you for coming today.